Hey everyone, today we're giving Gears fans an inside look at the development of our latest Gears of War novel, Ephira Rising. My name is Bonnie Jean Ma. I'm the Franchise Narrative Director for Gears of War at The Coalition. On planet Sarah, things were not always peaceful. Gears has a rich history of telling our stories in the expanded universe. And we've been working with Titan Books for the last few years to develop our latest novels, Gears of War Ascendance and Gears of War Bloodlines. So when it was time to develop our third novel, we really wanted to take a step back and look at a new time period that we can explore with fans. That new time period is actually a classic one. We wanted to explore the story of what happened after the end of Gears of War 3. So we had the opportunity to find the right storytelling partner to tell this. You came between Dom and his radishes, Lieutenant. This better be good. After a search, we knew that Mike Stackpole was the right author to tell this story. And so we were absolutely thrilled when everything worked out and we were able to start working together. Howdy. Um, I am uh, Michael Stackpole. I am a writer of science fiction. I've done game design. I've done a lot of tie-in novels. So Gears of War, I worked in Star Wars, Conan, Battletech. Fear Rising, I believe, is my 60th novel. A Fear Rising is a novel of people hoping to rebuild their world, being afraid that it may not be able to be rebuilt, and dealing with some of the ghosts and evil that is still exists in the world, and they've got to stop before it consumes everything. Huh. You gotta hand it to them grubs. They built to last. A Fear Rising picks up roughly six months after the end of Gears 3. The world of Sarah has been devastated, but is slowly beginning to recover. And the story centers around Marcus and Anya and their transition from having to be warriors to find their new role in this new world. So politics, monsters, gunfire, it's great. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear this shit. I'll get the popcorn. When the events of this book start, the Locust War is over. So how do you tell a story that has an enemy when all of our enemies are theoretically dead? This world is a world that has been hammered. And I mean, hammered pretty solidly. And power abhors a vacuum. There will always be somebody attempting to gather as much power as they can. And so you've got people who had everything before this conflict and now they've got nothing they want to remember themselves the way they were and a lot of people are going to try and remake the world in their own vision which is not the world that we see down the line and so we really did this in two ways one by developing other characters who are going to be able to become the bad guys but also by having the question of are all the locusts gone can we believe it when they say we're safe now? The specter of the locust and their possible return is one of those things that some people are going to use as boogeymen to scare children. But for all these people who are trying to rebuild, that's the hope killer. And the set of problems was, what do you do when we don't have a lot of stuff? We've got people that are used to living in cities and we don't have sewage treatment anymore. We don't have electricity. There's a whole bunch of problems that are thrown at the characters, both the, the physical challenges that Marcus has to deal with. And then Anya, her task is, oh gosh, I've got to rebuild civilization. There were a lot being heaped on our two main characters there and a lot of pressure. We came to this project with a set of goals. So we wanted to, first of all, tell an authentic Gears of War story. That would be a satisfying read for our fans. Marcus, are you okay? Marcus! Come on, get up! But we also came to you with some story guidelines. We wanted to talk about Marcus and what it's like for a soldier after a war ends. We wanted to look at the founding of the new COG. We know that Anya became the first minister, but what on earth were her steps to kind of becoming that, from being a gear on the ground to being the head of government? And then we also wanted to keep war as a key part of this story. And how do we have a war story when technically we ended the war at the end of the last game? 
you know, what was that tomorrow that Anya and Marcus were looking forward to after the end of Gears 3? You're looking at maintaining the continuity, which I think is just absolutely vital when you're doing tie-in work. I mean, this is what the fans live for, is to see more development of that continuity. And I personally really like the fact that we were looking at Marcus and Anya and looking at them at a, at a critical point in their lives, making decisions. And we also had stuff that would show us an end point, what they were working toward. Because people are trying to rebuild their lives, to get these characters who've always been in sort of a really grim position, putting them in a place where they can feel a little bit hopeful. The novel's going to cover maybe two months of three months of time. We're not going to get them all the way there. But, you know, we can certainly launch them. What's left, Anya? What have we got left now? Tomorrow, Marcus. We finally got a tomorrow. As you were saying with war, action and violence are a key part of what's in Gears of War. And so finding things that would give us that action side of the story for the readers that are going to be looking for that, that was kind of critical. And so it was fun to see how we were going to weave all those elements back together. Just internally at the Coalition, we know where Marcus was at the end of Gears 3. The war was over. He didn't really know what the future would hold. Anya was giving him some hope. But then the player doesn't really get to see Marcus until the beginning of Gears of War 4, where he is broken. Anya has died. He is estranged from his son. But in between that time, we had a trailer for Gears of War 4 that was called Tomorrow. And it was this little moment that showed Anya and Marcus and a little JD, and they were happy. And Marcus was hopeful and happy. So part of the brief that we gave to you was, how did Marcus go from being that veteran to somebody who actually was hopeful? How did you approach getting inside Marcus's head? My brother was in the U.S. Army for 32 years, and my brother was very generous in talking to me about all the stuff that he and buddies had gone through, talking about what it is to come out of a war zone, to try and normalize. That gave me a perspective on what Marcus was going to have to do if he was going to come to terms with all of this and be able to set that aside and get to that point where he could be happy. You guys were good at getting me to wrap my brain around where the world actually was, how broken it had been by the depth of the conflict. Again, because that was happening and we were working on this during lockdown, there were a lot of real world parallels. Having to learn to do all the things that a lot of us had to do when we were locked down, like maybe make bread or plant things and raise things, it made it a very human story. Because when we're playing the game, we see Marcus as very strong, very driven, very competent. And it's always struck me as, as the mark of a hero that when they're not in their safe space, or when they're not in their familiar space, that they still apply that same drive, that same inquisitiveness into what they're doing in their normal life. I'm not the conversational type. The other side of this is that it's not just a Marcus story. This is a story about Anya. So... Can you talk a little bit about Anya? Because she is a bit more of a cipher in our universe. As long as you have, Chairman. We interact with her in the games. She is a key feature in some of the earlier novels, but really we haven't been able to delve into storytelling with her in our newer games because she has passed on. So can you talk a little about your approach for Anya? Yeah, in approaching Anya and looking at how to develop her as a character, we know that she's going to be a leader and she's going to take on this vast responsibility for helping to rebuild things. And we've seen her be very competent on a logistical level and stuff in the, in the early things and then competent and capable of leadership and taking chances, in, certainly in Gears 3. And so to a certain extent, it was moving her out of the military mode, but having her still play with her core competencies. And for her, the struggle is do I want to take this responsibility or not? Don't I just want to step back and have this tomorrow, you know, be with Marcus and not have to worry about this stuff? And yet, because we know she's a person who's very responsible and feels that heavily, you know she's not going to walk away. It's a question of 
putting her in the right place where she gets to make that choice and then having her choose that as opposed to having her being forced to do it. So in this book, we have some amazing new characters that you've introduced. And one of the main ones is Brandon Terrell. Can you tell us a bit about Brandon and what his relationship becomes with Marcus? Brandon is a character who's a survivor. I realized that because the world has only been seen through the eyes of Gears before, that what we really needed was a character who could bring the story of what were other people doing. So he's kind of the scrounger and somebody who, who sees an aspect of the world that Marcus doesn't. From a storytelling aspect, one of the things that I knew that for Marcus to be able to begin to heal, he was going to have to open up a little bit. There were some serious issues that he's dealing with coming out of Gears 3, the big one being the death of Dom Santiago. Brandon is somebody who's there to be a different sort of contrast character, showing that there are other ways to solve problems in the world aside from, you know, cutting them in half with a lancer or something like that, uh, which is a perfectly good solution, uh, just not available necessary to, to everybody. Can you talk a little bit about Dom? How does his loss affect Marcus? When Dom dies in, in Gears 3, I mean, we all feel that loss. We are all Marcus. To be able to go through the book from Marcus's point of view, pain that you only hear in the voice and you see on the faces of the characters, I get to get inside his head and deal with that and give him more chances at trying to address it. One of the things that we really appreciated was seeing how that relationship between Anya and Marcus developed. And in a lot of stories, you see that relationship is full of conflict. But what I think we really appreciated was that we saw that Marcus and Anya are each other's rocks. They've been through hell together. Sure, in other books of the romances, you'll have little domestic spats and everything like that. But gosh, these guys have gone through things that, that make that look like nothing because they've been in those very dangerous, literally dangerous situations where they've had to trust each other. They know they've got each other's back. That is what has allowed them to stay alive. And I really like in, in writing romance or in writing relationships to actually have an adult relationship where people can trust each other and really do love each other and show it by doing their best and trying to be understanding. One of the fun things to see was their home base, like their place of safety and where they want to build a future is the Stroud estate. And we see it in 25 years later in Gears 4 when Marcus is kind of hiding out. So it was very fun to kind of see what that was like at the beginning when they did have hopes for rebuilding the house and for building a life there. We kind of get glimpses to how Marcus is really starting to fix the place <laughs> up. Right. And then, <laughs> so we'll just imagine that it, it it got really nice, and then sad things happened. Yeah, that sounds about right. For Marcus, it was really, it really, really important. He had spent his whole adult life destroying things. And so undoing some of that is part of that healing process, showing that you can do more than just destroy things. You have included some of our existing characters, our you know, fan favorite characters like Baird and Cole. Can you tell me about some of the challenges that are involved when you are writing a media tie-in book? The biggest problem in writing a, a tie-in book is that you have an audience that has their preconceived notions of what these characters are like. Hey, you're him, aren't you? You're Augustus Cole. Cole Train. What brings you back here? Hey, surprise, you remember me, baby? And if you strike a false note, that just destroys it for them. They will put the book down, they will not continue to read. Uh, I suppose you want me to say I've always loved you. Oh. But I don't. I really, really don't. Ah. Incorporating the already existing characters and trying to make sure that they were going to read true was actually made pretty easy because of all the work that you guys had already done. So at all times, you're attempting to be true to the characters and show the reader 
that you know and love the world as much as they do. Oh, great. Look who's back in town. Well, we did flood them out the tunnel. What do you hope that fans take away um, from reading A Fear Arising? That's a, uh, that's a difficult question to try and ask what, what the author hopes that readers will, will take away. What I really hope with every book is that I hope that it's a, a good, solid story that they feel fits in the world. I hope that it's got all the exciting parts where they want to see exciting parts, and it's Dom. got the emotional parts Dom didn't make it. where they want to see emotional parts. I mean, I think between the politics and the action and all the different characters, um, and I had a lot of fun writing different characters just to show different people and their positions in the world and, and how they were surviving. What A Fear Arising does for me is really be able to understand how those events that affected all of us when we played Gears 3. Dom's death, his father's death, winning the war but at such a high cost, having the opportunity to, to actually see the after effects and be inside Marcus's head and hear his point of view and his thoughts and witness his struggle and how he kind of comes out the other side. That was a wonderful part of going through this whole novel development process with you. You know, I hope that that all really comes together for the reader and says, yeah, this is this world and you will be able to see how it's going to go forward. That's my hope. And if they if they laugh and if they cry a little bit, that's OK, too. On behalf of the coalition and on behalf of myself as a, you know, as a fan of Gears, thank you so much for telling this story. I wanted to welcome you to the Gears fam. Thank you very much. That 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 means a lot. I uh, I've done a number of shows this summer and run into people who are Gears fans and I just I know how much this means to them and and I really appreciate you guys in entrusting to me the two key franchise characters and uh, uh, and I'm, I'm real real happy with with what we were able to put together. Did you see that?